Today, we're taking a closer look at two topics featured in the April issue of PRS. Levels of evidence and operating room safety. These very different issues are equally pivotal in protecting the future of plastic surgery. Joining our discussion today is the Reconstructive Section Editor, Dennis Orgel from Boston. Thanks for inviting me, Ron. Glad you could join us. In the first article, the authors consider the growing importance of evidence-based medicine. After studying almost 200 meeting presentations, they conclude that levels of evidence for studies in plastic surgery are rarely level one or two. Dennis, why is it so difficult to have a high level of evidence in plastic surgery? Well, as you know, Rod, plastic surgeons are independent thinkers. We like to do complicated operations, and it's actually hard for an individual surgeon to accrue enough patients doing a single operation to uh, do a high-level study. But it's certainly not impossible to conduct high levels of evidence studies in our field. In fact, we have two level one articles in this issue alone, one from the hand section one from the cosmetic section. What can we do at an organizational level to encourage more high-level studies like this, and why is it so important for the future of our specialty? Well, we need to leverage our organizations to better provide this collaboration. And this is already starting to happen, for example, with the University of Michigan Press Reconstruction Study. There are several centers are getting together and prospectively looking at breast reconstruction and looking at their outcomes. There are also uh, several large data sets that will be helpful to surgeons. The second article also aims to protect the future of plastic surgery by safeguarding the surgeons themselves. Almost 400,000 sharp injuries occur each year and we as surgeons are at the highest risk for acquiring one. The authors review the wide range of sharp injuries among surgeons and find out how we can prevent them. What did they discover? It's surprising that they discovered that in 100 operations that there were on average of 6.8 injuries. And so that means that about one in every 15 operations we do, someone will be injured. This issue affects all types of surgeons and healthcare workers worldwide. So why is it so important for us to take the lead on this? Well, plastic surgery really needs to have its top priority being safety. One of these injuries in the operating room can be devastating for uh, the person who is injured and can totally uh, destroy their career or, or their life. And so we really need to take safety and make it our top priority. We have new technologies that are available today, uh, some of which that we're using in our hospital and that many of you are using in your hospital. But technology alone is not going to solve this problem. We need better education, probably at the medical student and resident level, so that we can uh, make our operating rooms as safe as possible. Thank you, Dennis. Since we're discussing the future of plastic surgery, I'm also pleased to announce that our newest contribution to the future of our specialty and our field is finally here. It's PRS Go, our new global open access journal. It is now live online. Read all about it in this month's issue and visit us at the ASPS booth at the ASAPS meeting in New York City to find out a lot more. In the operating room, in the research lab, and in your hands, PRS and PRS Go is bringing you the future of plastic surgery today.